Welcome back. In today's video, we're going to look at how we express uncertainties in a graph. Okay, so I'm going to try to be as precise as possible here um, in order to let you see how it works. So when you're doing an experiment, you have your two variables, you take your data and you want to plot your points. So suppose you got some random points and they look something like this. So in physics and in some other sciences, we always try to make a line of best fit. A line of best fit is our best approximation of a line that goes as close as possible through all points. And there's actually one line of best fit. Usually we do it by eye, and that one can have more than one right choice. But if we're doing it precisely, um, there's going to be just one. So how do we get to that line? First, we need to include the uncertainties of our values into our graph. So suppose we took our values and all values have an uncertainty in x of, let's say, 1. And an uncertainty in y of, let's say, 2. If we had a scale here, um, then we can draw lines that show that our value, each, each number that has an x and a y, isn't just exactly there, but it could be anywhere from one less in x to one more in x, and from two less in y to two more in y. How do we show that with lines? So let's suppose that one looks about like this size. That is one. So here, if this is, I don't know, 3, then after that line it's 4, and before that line it's 2, and 1. So uh, what we need to do first is draw lines to the right and left, one unit, whatever that unit is, on all of our points. So let me do that. Okay, done. I try to be as precise as possible, making them all look exactly the same. That's not always the case. Sometimes different points have different uncertainties, and we'll get to that later. But for now, they were all supposed to measure one to the right and one to the left. Now we have to do the same thing with y, with the vertical axis, but now they're going to measure twice as much up and twice as much down, or whatever that is in our scale. So remember, scales don't have to be the same, but it does have to measure two in this vertical scale, while the x uncertainty has to measure one on this um, horizontal scale. But for now, let's suppose both scales are the same, so our bars for y will be twice as big. So let me draw that. Okay, some of them might look a little twisted, bear with me. Um, it should look more precise, and it would look more precise if you use graph paper, of course, and actual um, measurements. So how do we make that line? Well, the trick is to draw first the, the line with the maximum possible slope that you can while passing through all of the green uh, lines, and the one with the minimum possible slope also while passing through all of the green lines. So let me see if that's possible with this drawing that I've made. I think this works. It's at least touching, as close as possible, every single um, vertical green line. Okay, something like that. Notice that it doesn't have to pass through 0, 0, through the origin. You just pass it wherever it looks better. Um, in this case, it it's not really touching this one, but it was a little bit impossible. Remember, this is an experiment that I just invented, so it might not make that much sense, but I'm just trying to demonstrate how this would be done. Now we need to make a line that has a bigger slope. Let's see if we can do that. Okay, notice that I definitely failed because um, I decided to ignore this one that looks a little bit like it's an outlier, like it shouldn't be there. Maybe that value wasn't taken correctly. And you can do that if you can support your choice with scientific facts. 
Um, in this case, the fact is I didn't do it previously, but I will show you a picture of one that does work. That you can make a big line, uh, a big slope of a line, and then a small slope um, with the same point, within the same points, and it should work. Now, I have a line of a maximum slope. So let's call this one max and this one min because it has the minimum slope. So what's the slope of my average line, my average slope? Well, you have to make a line that passes right through the middle and also through this cross, of course, of the two lines. So it looks something like this. Okay, so remember, I definitely made mistakes, but there was, this was the best line that I could draw. It doesn't pass through the origin, and that's okay. We would have to find uh, a physical explanation of why it would or wouldn't pass through the origin to see if that is consistent with our experiment or not. But since we don't have a physical background, then it doesn't have to pass through the origin. That would be a fine uh, line best fit. So how do you know? Well, it should have the average of the slopes. That means that you add the maximum slope and the minimum slope and you divide by two. That is going to give you the average slope. So calculate, if you were doing this seriously for a lab report, you calculate the slope with um, the rise over run. So this is delta y, this is delta x, the slope is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Calculate that slope for the minimum and the maximum, then you add them divided by two, and it gives you the average slope of the lines of the data, taking into account the uncertainties in x and the uncertainties in y. So this procedure is really useful um, to just get the number that you want and what's the uncertainty of that slope? Because of course you want to say everything in terms of uncertainties. So the uncertainty of that slope is actually the maximum slope minus the minimum over two. Why? Because that will give you this distance over here between the maximum and the minimum divided by two just gives you like that size between your lines. So it's what we're basically saying with this equation is that your slope could be this one, but it could go from this high one to this low one. It could be any slope between those two. And before I finish, I just want to say that these uncertainty lines of the uncertainty, like one and two, are not necessarily just the uncertainty of the device that you use, the absolute uncertainties that I taught you before about how many centimeters were in a ruler, how many how separated the lines were, or what is the minimum decimal value that you can read in a digital device. But it has to do a lot more with the uncertainty of multiple trials. So when you take multiple trials, you will have very big values and very small values for the same measurement that you want to make and the uncertainty is is calculated basically like this so if you took um let's say the same measurement in five different trials and you got 2.0 2.1 2.0 1.9 and 2.0 so your biggest value is 2.1 and your smallest value is 1.9. So you're going to take 2.1 minus 1.9 and divide it by 2. This has a distance of 0 0.2 divided by 2 is 0 0.1. So this would be the uncertainty of your value. So depending on which one is bigger, if the device's absolute uncertainty is bigger than the trial's uncertainty, then you use the devices. But if the trial's uncertainty is bigger than the device's uncertainty, then um, you use this one. So you use the biggest uncertainty that you have because it doesn't matter where you got it from, but if there are errors, if there's uncertainty, 
you have to take it into account when you're doing your graph. I hope this makes sense and leave any questions down below.